So get this, I was going for a walk the other day, just minding my own business, and this happened. I woke up an hour later and thought to myself, you know, that could have only been one thing. New Strathmore Art Supplies. Oh boy, it's their new line of watercolor travel pads. A whole bunch of brushes, handfuls of watercolor and gouache. Ooh, some pencils, even some pastels. Thanks, Strathmore. I may have been bonked in the head, but you don't have to tell me what to do from here. Let's load up the art bag and get out there and paint something. So I walked down the street and I found this nice farmyard, and I think those three silos make for a nice focal point. The horizontal nature of the scene makes it perfect for this Strathmore 3x9 inch watercolor travel pad. So I sketched that all in with a Lyra 2H pencil, and now it's time for the watercolors. I'm reactivating them with some water. These are Daler Rowney Aquafine watercolors. Their quality is really outstanding. And these are all watercolors except for that, which is white gouache paint. This is just a light wash of yellow ochre to set the tone for the colors that are to come. That's a wash of ultramarine blue, and into it I'll put some of the white gouache. This gives it a bit of body, a bit of opacity. And while my yellow ochre wash is still wet, I'll get a transition from a warmer horizon to a cooler sky. These washes are my first test of the durability of Strathmore's paper. That paper stayed flat the whole time. There was absolutely no buckling. If you can't already tell, I like to paint outdoors with a minimal setup. And the last thing I have time for is to be wrestling with poor quality materials. And I knew when putting those washes on that sky that this book would hold up. The brush I'm using for most of this is the Princeton Quarter Inch Synthetic Hair Watercolor Flat Brush. I find it really holds on to the paint, which is evident in this thick passage here. I gotta draw very carefully here because this is my focal point mixing up an earthy, greenish, yellowish warm, and I'll use it to not only indicate some of those trees, but to also resolve the silhouettes of those silos. I'll use the remains of that pigment for some dry brush work, and right over top of that red, I'll mix kind of a greenish complement. It's on the blue side to indicate the distance of those background trees. You know, atmospheric perspective. Here now, closer to the viewer, I have warmed up that green by using more yellows and reds in the mix. There is just something so refreshing about being outdoors with a sketchbook. The sun has come out, and this front silo is casting a shadow onto the back one. And I've switched here to a number two round brush just to get some textures in these tiny little areas. The peaks and valleys of the cold pressed paper are really nice for this kind of texture. I'll use the same technique to rough in these trees, letting the brush kind of slide over the paper, using its rough texture to my advantage. Now using some white gouache and some cooler colors, I will mix up the light of those trees and paint them in opaquely as lighter passages over the dark. That's why I have the white gouache on the palette, to give the watercolor that kind of added flexibility. You could absolutely do paintings like this just with gouache paint. However, I have always preferred the transparent default quality of watercolor, giving me the option to add the opacity that comes with gouache only when I need it. And this sketch is almost done. I'm just gonna add a few color notes. This purple mixture is kind of a middle ground between the warms and cools in these trees. I find it adds a bit of spontaneity to the piece that I like. Well, let's call that a successful first outing for the Strathmore supplies. But I'm not done yet, let's do another painting. A more urban setting this time. I'm looking at that timbered building there. And I'll begin my sketch this time around with a 2B pencil, which creates a thicker, darker stroke. I do like a more bold sketch with architecture. Otherwise though, this starts the same way as the last one, with a wash of yellow ochre. And of course I'm leaving behind the white of the page for those buildings. Maybe a cooler transition here at the bottom. Here's a thick mixture of white gouache with some sky blue, and I'll roughly scumble in that sky, purposely leaving gaps between the brushstrokes. You get a little electricity in the color when you do that. Here I'll mix a bunch of different colors along with some white gouache to arrive at a gray that can represent the rooftop. I'll warm it up a tiny bit. The round brush that I'm using there really holds a nice point. I find that very important when doing tiny sketches like this. Here's a shot of the two Princeton brushes that I used for this painting. Mixing up a shadow color for the buildings, and again using that fine round brush I can put these in place. I was a little shy with the placement of my rooftops, so with a little white gouache in the mix I can paint right over top of what I have. I'll get some thick paint on my brush here and dry brush in the windows. Once again, I really love the texture of this Strathmore cold press watercolor paper. Okay, I'm starting to lay in the timbered sections. 
In my opinion, you only get one brush stroke per piece of wood here. It's so easy to overdo this kind of thing. If I overdo this, my painting will look more like a zebra than it would the building I'm painting. And I really don't want that. What I'm doing here reminds me of what I did in the last one. Not only am I painting the background trees, but I'm also clarifying the shape of the building in front of them. It's always nice to have a few different colors mingling together. I switched to my flat brush, and here's another area where you only get one brush stroke per section. Kind of. Dot dot dot, and ooh, I do love that texture. The sketchbook I'm using is the 5.5 by 8 inch Stitched Watercolor Travel Journal. All of the books in this line are made with 100% cotton cold pressed watercolor paper. They're archival, which means your sketches will stay vibrant. And here's a very dark mixture for the shadows underneath the cars. Cars hug the ground very tightly, which makes one of their defining features the shadows they cast. Dipping into some thick white gouache to get the lights on the tops of these cars now. It pulls them out from the background. Another little trick for indicating cars is by way of their very saturated tail lights. A couple of those strokes is worth a hundred details. Just indicating a few space markers on the parking lot. And that's the final touch. Back at home I'll open up my sketchbooks as well as the boxes of pastels. Pastels can be a great way to add some rich, saturated color notes to the piece. Now don't overdo this. I don't want my piece to look like it was repainted in the studio. You know, using pastels like this is not even something I do every single time. In fact, I think the other sketch is fine just as it is. Well, this is Marco Bucci signing off. Thanks for watching. And thanks Strathmore for sending me these great supplies. I'll be using all of them moving forward. Oh, and Strathmore, next time you send me a package, guess what? <laughs>